Now that we have our red window, I want to actually put a triangle on it, but before we do that, I'm going to get rid of this clear stuff, just because for some reason I like the black window more. Nothing against the color red, but, but black's just more my style. Let me explain OpenGL's coordinate system to you. I'm going to draw a vertical line here, as best as I can get a vertical line, and a horizontal line there. Did you like how I got straight lines there? I cheated. I click, I, and then I right click while holding my on my left click, and then I click over here, and that gives me a straight line. Anyway, a little way to cheat. Here is the x-axis, very similar to what you do in your algebra class, and this is the y-axis. This location right here is a positive 1 on the x-axis. This is a negative 1 on the x-axis, and same with the y. Here's negative 1 for y, and, and positive 1 for y. So as long as I draw points in this location, then I should be fine. OpenGL operates on points, or operates using points. We call them vertices. Sometimes we call it vertex data, that kind of thing. Call it what you wish, as long as we give it points, and, and tell OpenGL to work with those points, then it should be fine. OpenGL is excellent for drawing primitives. Okay, you, you you probably aren't going to draw your house with OpenGL, but you might draw your house using a zillion triangles. That's that's definitely a possibility. So, so OpenGL is good at drawing points. It's good at drawing lines. It's good at drawing triangles. And so, a good hello world a demonstration for OpenGL is to use triangles. Let's see if I can get this to work for me. I want to draw a triangle from the top center to right here, and then we'll go from right there to right about here, and then we'll go from there to right about there. So we'll get this nice big triangle that will fill up our screen. Let's figure out what coordinates we're looking at here. This looks like it will be, uh, let's use red here. Ah, we'll use white, actually. This coordinate system here, or this coordinate right here, will be zero in the x, and a 1 in the y. Okay, this coordinate right here will be negative 1 in the x, negative 1 in the y, and this coordinate right here will be 1 in the x and negative 1 in the y. So we need to give OpenGL these three locations, and if we do that properly, then OpenGL should render this window for us. Let me let me just put that off the screen for now. And initialize GL, that's a good place to tell OpenGL about our points. What we don't need to do every single frame is tell OpenGL, here's some points, here's some points, here's some points. Instead, OpenGL, we want to say, OpenGL, here's some points, keep track of them, and when I tell you to draw them, draw them. Oh, initialize GL only runs once for the duration of the window, whereas Paint GL will run every time we draw, which will be often. Okay, and lots of things cause a repaint. So in this initialize GL, initialize GL function, I want to tell OpenGL about our locations. Now I could say float. I don't know why I wrote flotation, maybe because I was saying location when I was writing float. I could say float, but OpenGL actually, to be platform independent, defines its own data type. So I'm going to say GL float like that, and if I put my cursor on this and hit F12 to look at the definition, you'll see a GL float is simply a type def for a float. So writing GL float is the exact same as writing float, at least on my platform. GL float verts array. Okay, again, these are going to be our locations. I believe our first location was 0 on the X and a 1 on the Y. The pluses are not necessary, but I like to add them simply because it keeps my data lined up when I'm doing negative values, which we are. In fact, this very next vertex, if I remember, was negative 1 in the X and negative 1 in the Y as well. F is the suffix for float for the compiler. And then the next location, I believe, was 1 in the X and negative 1 in the Y. Okay, so there are our six floats. I don't necessarily have to put the trailing comma, but I can. And I forgot my assignment operation here. So these vertices, or these floats, are sitting right now on my stack. I've declared them, or defined them locally, 
inside of my initialize GL function. H having them on the stack doesn't do OpenGL any favors. I actually need to copy them to my graphics card, and I need to do that using OpenGL. In, or in order to copy them down to my graphics card, I need to create a buffer object. OpenGL will manage the buffer object for me. I'll even draw the square to represent my buffer object. And when I say buffer, you're probably thinking, or buffer object, you're probably thinking object-oriented programming, which is very similar to what I'm about to do, except in normal object-oriented programming, we explicitly create the objects and tell the objects what to do. But OpenGL uses a C syntax, the programming language C, simply because OpenGL has been around for a long time. And so when we want to do things with our objects, we actually have to call functions in OpenGL, they're they're essentially static functions. Anyway, we'll get to that. This is my this is my buffer object. Buffer object that maintains state and information about my buffer. Let's let's tell OpenGL to create one of those. GL gen buffers. Okay, if it wants to know how many buffers it wants us to wants to we want it to create. I just want one buffer for now. And then it takes this output parameter, this glu int pointer. Basically, what OpenGL will do is store the numbers that represent the buffer. Let me let me just make one of these. In fact, we're going to need it. Uh, we'll probably just need it in this function, so I'll do it locally here, even though generally we wouldn't do this. glu int my buffer. ID. If you read the OpenGL documentation, they call this a name. I don't know why they call it a name, because it's not a string. And when I think name, I think a string of characters. But So I'll call it an ID, but if you read OpenGL documentation, they'll say, hey, we're giving you the name of this buffer. Right? I pass the address of my buffer ID, and after I've said GL generate a buffer, OpenGL will store inside this buffer ID the ID that represents this buffer object. You can almost think of it like a pointer. In fact, really the only difference between a C++ pointer and an OpenGL uh, buffer ID is a pointer is an actual, it's a number that is an actual address out in your virtual process space, whereas these IDs are kind of logical addresses instead. In fact, let me put a breakpoint here. Build this, run this, and use the debugger to show you. Oh, what's the build error? Link? Oh, I still have it open here in the background. Run it. Hover over my buffer ID. And you see it's not an ugly pointer address. It's actually just a logical address. Or a logical number buffer ID says, okay, when you say 1, when you tell me to do something with buffer ID 1, you're talking about this buffer I created for you. All right, we've generated that buffer, and now we need to gl bind buffer to the gl array buffer binding point. I need to bind my buffer ID. All right, now it took me forever to understand what in tarnation is going on with this. OpenGL has several binding points. Again, they're logical. They're theoretical. They're just there. It's it, it, anyway, I'll, there's several different values I can pass in here, different binding points. I explain this pretty well in my game engine programming playlist, but I'll explain it again here. Um, there's GL array buffer. Okay, I don't even know why I'm drawing a box. It's not really worthy of a box. It's just a binding point. Okay, here I'll draw. I'll draw a point. Here's a point. All right, and we'll do 12 point font here, and I'll say this is GL array buffer binding point. What's another binding point we'll use in the very near future? Another binding point we'll use is gl element array buffer. Okay, so these are two possible binding points I can bind to. When I say gl bind buffer, I'm saying, hey, whenever I'm talking about the gl array buffer, I'm talking about the buffer that's bound to that point. So you see how I kind of bound our one and only buffer object. We'll create more of these later. But for now, one and only buffer object, I've bound to this GL array buffer binding point. Okay, and I could create another buffer and break this binding here and then and say, hey, whenever I'm talking about GL array buffer, I'm talking about this other buffer that's bound to the GL array buffer binding point. And then 
I'm not necessarily limited to GL array buffer. I could bind my buffer to a GL element array buffer binding point. It doesn't really matter. But these are two binding points. It's like another level of abstraction that OpenGL moves us further away from our buffer objects. For now, I got array buffer, and I'm binding our one and only buffer to that array buffer binding point. Why is that important? Well, watch this next function I'm going to call GL buffer data. Okay, this using this function I can send down our data about our 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 vertices here in RAM and GL buffer data. And the first thing it asks is, well, which which buffer do you want me to send the data to? Well, I only got one buffer, but it doesn't really matter. I have, still have to be explicit here. I want you to send the data down to the buffer that is bound to the GL array buffer binding point. Right? Very soon we'll do GL element array buffer binding, but for now. I'm just doing GL array buffer. Well, OpenGL looks at the GL array buffer binding point and says, oh, this object. Okay, you want me to send the data you're about to send me down to this object. This, hopefully you're getting the point here. This object maintains state about the buffer. There's various things we can set about the buffer. We'll see that soon enough. But when I say buffer data, uh, that actually creates the buffer, actual array of bytes, if you would, that ideally OpenGL will store on my graphics card and my graphics card memory. It's OpenGL is not it forced to. It's up to OpenGL what it wants to do with that data, but most likely it's going to send this little bit of data down to my graphics card. How much data are we sending down to OpenGL? Well, since this is a statically defined array and it's defined on the stack and the compiler can tell exactly how big this is, it's six floats times the size of a float, I can just say size of, with the control U to lowercase that, size of verts, I'm sending you down that many bytes, and then this next argument you can't really see, but it's void star data, alright, well give me an address to the data, well the address is verts, it's this array here, right, you'll find the data there, and then the last argument here is usage, which is a hint to OpenGL, uh, there's various arguments we can pass here, but basically, we're not going to change the data after sending it down to OpenGL. So I'll say GL static draw. And when OpenGL sees GL static draw, it says, oh, I can probably send this data down deep dark into some corner of the graphics card that's really optimized, but hard for me to get to and write to. So I'll write it once and leave it there. And, and uh, the graphics card, however, can read from it quickly. And in theory, that's the idea. It's really up to OpenGL what it wants to do with that. Don't get too hung up on this argument. So there we go. Create a buffer, bind the buffer to the binding point, send this data down to OpenGL. So literally that OpenGL takes that and copies this data into this this array here. And these are just bytes and copies all those bytes down hopefully on the graphics card. Now that we got that on the graphics card, it's it's time to draw it. Alright, we'll we'll draw it in the next video.